By 2026, almost every brand has walked away from premium compact cameras. Some called them irrelevant. Some said smartphones killed them. But Sony didn't walk away. And that's exactly why this camera sits at the top of this list. Not because it's loud, not because it's revolutionary, but because it exists for the right reasons. Welcome to Alt Buzz. Before we dive deeper, if you appreciate this kind of grounded, research-driven camera coverage, hit that subscribe button. It genuinely helps the channel grow and keeps these deep dive videos coming. To understand the Sony's number one upcoming camera, you first need to understand what kind of camera this is not. This is not a phone replacement. This is not a vlogging first product. And this is definitely not Sony chasing headlines. The Sony RX100 Mark VIII is Sony making a deliberate choice in a shrinking market, and that choice is what makes it important. See, Sony already lost the war against smartphones, deliberately. They're not trying to convince casual users anymore. They're not plastering spec sheets across social media, hoping to go viral. Instead, they've accepted a simple truth. The premium compact category today isn't about volume. It's about intentional users. People who want real optics, people who want manual control without carrying a bag, people who want a camera that's always there, not a commitment. Sony understands this audience better than anyone else still operating in this space. The RX100 Mark VIII isn't trying to expand the market. It's trying to serve the people who never left it. That alone separates it from almost everything else coming in 2026. While other brands abandoned ship, Sony stayed. And staying matters more than you think. If you look at Sony's recent camera releases, a clear pattern emerges. Sony has stopped experimenting recklessly in mature product lines. Instead, it's refining, stabilizing, and quietly improving. The RX100 Mark VIII fits perfectly into this mindset, which also tells us something important about what this camera will not be. Sony is not trying to redesign the RX100 from scratch. They're not trying to turn it into a creator rig, and they're definitely not trying to shock the market with risky features. That's intentional, because RX100 buyers don't want disruption. They want confidence. They want to pick up their camera and know exactly what it will deliver. The RX100 Mark VIII is designed to feel familiar, dependable, and precise. And that's why its upgrades are subtle but meaningful. This isn't about adding layers of complexity. It's about removing friction, making every interaction feel natural making every shot feel effortless. Instead of chasing megapixels, Sony is clearly prioritizing performance feel. The RX100 Mark VIII is expected to refine the one-inch stack sensor approach. Faster readout, better efficiency, cleaner real-world output. On paper, this may not look dramatic, but in use, it means less lag, better response, more reliable shooting in unpredictable moments. This camera isn't built for lab charts, it's built for people who actually use their cameras. People who shoot in real light, in real situations, with real consequences if they miss the moment. Sony's sensor division has always prioritized yield, consistency, and heat control over headline numbers. And that philosophy shines here. The improvements you'll notice won't be in spec sheets. They'll be in shadow detail that stays clean, in processing artifacts that simply don't appear in colors that feel natural instead of algorithmic. This is a camera that rewards experience, not pixel peeping. Sony increasingly designs cameras around how they behave in your hands, not just how they test. And the RX100 Mark VIII is a perfect example of that philosophy. It's not about adding modes. It's about making the camera disappear between you and the shot. Expect improvements in wake-up speed, shutter response that feels instant, Exposure consistency during zoom that doesn't hunt or hesitate. These are things you don't notice immediately, but once they're missing, you feel it. The RX100 Mark VIII is designed to be invisible, to respond before you finish the thought, to capture before the moment passes. This is where Sony's decades of camera making experience shows. They know what real users need, not influencers, not reviewers chasing clicks. Real users who pull out their camera 50 times a day and expect it to work 50 times a day. If you're finding value in this kind of research-first breakdown, consider supporting the channel through membership. 
It directly shapes the quality and depth of future content. And check out the website for extended notes and comparisons that don't make it into videos. Your support keeps this work sustainable. Now let's talk about the most debated part of the RX100 Mark VIII, the lens. Sony faces a clear decision with the RX100 Mark VIII. Chase extreme zoom ranges or protect image consistency. Based on Sony's recent optical decisions across all its systems, the answer is clear. Sony prefers predictable sharpness, reliable autofocus, optical balance. The RX100 Mark VIII's lens will likely support the sensor, not fight it. This camera is built for trust, not surprise. Sony has become conservative with optics in recent years, and for good reason. They've learned that consistency across focal lengths matters more than impressive extremes at either end. So instead of pushing for aggressive optical compromises, Sony will likely limit ambition. They'll choose a lens that maintains reliable performance at every focal length. That delivers sharp corners, that focuses quickly and accurately, this approach avoids the mistakes Sony made in earlier compact cameras, where ambitions sometimes outpace capability. The RX100 Mark VIII isn't trying to be a cinema camera. Sony already learned what happens when compact cameras chase extreme video specs. Overheating, unreliable performance, disappointed users. Instead, the RX100 Mark VIII is expected to focus on reliability, stable autofocus, manageable heat behavior, this makes it suitable for video without turning it into a specialist tool. For RX100 users, that balance matters more than numbers. They don't need 8K or extreme frame rates. They need clips that work, color that's predictable, autofocus that doesn't hunt during important moments. Sony knows RX100 buyers aren't buying it only for video. So instead of extreme frame rates or risky thermal targets, they're prioritizing stability and long clips. Continuous autofocus that actually stays locked. Exposure that doesn't shift randomly. This approach serves people who occasionally need video, not people building a YouTube empire. When a camera line survives this long, familiarity becomes a feature. Sony understands that RX100 users don't want to relearn their camera. They want muscle memory to translate. They want buttons in the same places. They want the same feel in their hand. So the RX100 Mark VIII is expected to preserve pocketability, keep button logic familiar, make only subtle ergonomic refinements. Any changes are likely practical, not flashy, maybe improved grip texture, maybe minor screen improvements, maybe better durability perception, but nothing that disrupts the core experience. The goal isn't to impress first-time buyers, it's to make existing users feel at home, to let them upgrade without starting over, in an industry obsessed with reinvention, this kind of restraint is rare and valuable. The RX100 Mark VIII is not priced to compete with phones, and Sony is perfectly fine with that. A premium price filters casual buyers. It protects the RX100 identity. It keeps the line from clashing with APS-C cameras in Sony's own lineup. Sony would rather sell fewer RX100s than dilute what the RX100 stands for. This camera is positioned as a choice, not an alternative. It's for people who already know what they want, who understand the value of real optics and manual control, who don't need convincing. This pricing strategy isn't aggressive, it's protective. Sony is comfortable with a smaller, more intentional audience. They're filtering on purpose. And in 2026, that kind of clarity is refreshing. Sony's timing also reinforces this strategy. An early 2026 release allows Sony to refresh the RX100 line without hype. Avoid overlap with major alpha launches. Quietly test demand for premium compacts. This feels less like a push and more like a confident continuation. Sony isn't screaming for attention. They're simply saying, here it is for those who want it. That's a position of strength. It shows Sony believes in the product without needing market validation. They're observing, not pushing. Sony RX100 Mark VIII isn't number one because it dominates the market. It's number one because it understands its place. In 2026, few brands are committed to premium compacts. Fewer still are refining them thoughtfully. Most just walked away, but Sony stayed. And in staying, they've created something rare. The RX100 Mark VIII represents engineering restraint. Long-term vision, respect for experienced users, 
It's not trying to convince you. It assumes you already know why you want it, and that's exactly why it earns the top spot. Not by being the loudest, not by chasing trends, but by being exactly what it needs to be for exactly the people who need it. That kind of confidence is uncommon, and in a market full of noise, uncommon wins. If this breakdown helped you understand the RX 100 Mark 8 more clearly, consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. And your support through Super Thanks genuinely helps the channel grow and keeps these research-driven videos possible. For extended notes, deeper comparisons, and written analysis, check out the website. And if you want to support the work more directly, channel membership makes a real difference. Thanks for watching.